Let's have a look at the radio module from Tindy. Uh, it costs about 8 US dollars. Here we can see the simple batch antennas for the receiver and the transmitter. It is supplied with uh, 5 volts DC. Between these two connections and you get the output signal here with which is called intermodulation frequency which we will get here. The radar sensor I recently bought from Tindy. Its price is 7.2 US dollars. It's working at 10.525 gigahertz with an accuracy of 3 megahertz so this is in the last digit. The output power is 13 dBm which is 20 milliwatts. Its operating voltage is 5 volts. It draws up to 60 milliamperes. We have some harmonic emissions. Uh, the receiver sensitivity in this band is minus 86 dBm. The noise in this bandwidth is 10 microvolts. The PCB antennas have a gain of 8 dBi. What frequency do you get for what velocity? So, as I said, the frequency 10.525 GHz, this uh, has in the free air a wavelength of uh, about 28 millimeters. Um, the internal function of the radar module in a very simple form looks like this. We have a sine wave signal source with the power driver, the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna. This is a multiply element which is called mixer. Um, and this multiplies the transmitted signal with the received signal. So let's calculate what the output gets for a stationary target. The transmitted waveform is reflected at the target and the receiving antenna uh, receives the reflected signal. So for the transmitted signal we have the transmission amplitude uh, times cosinus omega t and the received signal is the receiving amplitude times cosinus from omega t plus delta phi. Delta phi is the difference in phase of the transmitted and, and received waveform. Um, when we multiply these, um, of course the amplitudes get multiplied. We have a half here. Um, and then we have the, the cosinus of the difference of these arguments, which uh, is then uh, delta phi, plus the cosine of, of the sum of these arguments. And the sum of these arg arguments is about uh, 20 gigahertz, so this will be filtered out or, or even can't be done by the hardware which is built in there. So what is left over is the, the cosine of delta phi. Um, the transmit amplitude is a constant voltage or signal and the received uh, signal is proportional to 1 over r squared. So the greater the distance of the target to the module is, the, the lower is the received signal power or the signal amplitude and therefore also, our output signal gets smaller and smaller. So it's a, a completely analog output signal. And if you want to use it with an Arduino, for example, you have to uh, do a signal conditioning with operational amplifiers. So when we look at this situation at one time, so the time is constant, the the field strength over the distance um, looks at like this. So we have some, some more waveforms in between, but for simplicity, this doesn't matter. So you can extend this if you want to. 
by a multiple, uh, multiple of uh, the wavelength. So we start here with our cosine with a transmitting file and it gets to the target and it comes back to the receiver and we have here a receiving phase. To visualize this a bit more clearly I have uh, flipped this return return signal to here so you can think of it like the waveform uh, continuously is transmitted to a receiver which has the double distance of the target distance. The target distance is called here delta x and this is in meters and I have here a phase which is called alpha and this is in radians. So when we do the equation we have here receiving phase minus the uh, transmitting phase plus uh, 2 pi radians times um, the number of um, complete wavelengths. So this is uh, 2 times, this is because of this, this is 1 delta x, 2 delta x, um, divided by lambda, and we round it off to an integer. And this is equal to the double local phase. So let's simplify the equation we got from the physics. Uh, we have here the receiver phase, the transmitter phase, which we will call delta phi, it's the phase difference. Uh, we replace this alpha by uh, 2 pi radians times uh, delta x, or so the target distance divided by the wavelength. If we do this we get 2 times 2 pi times delta x over lambda. If you write it here again and bring this part over here we have then delta phi is 2 times 2 pi delta x over lambda minus 2 pi radians times the integer number of wavelength of the distance. We put this uh, 2 up here and then extract the factor 2 pi radians and then we get this. Um, I would say we can call this somehow a modulo operation for floating point numbers and so we can write it as 2 pi radians times 2 delta x modulo uh, lambda. Most important here is that we have a factor of 2. So delta phi makes one cycle for each half lambda, which is in our case every 14.24 millimeters. When we plot this, on this axis we have the target distance delta x as a multiple of lambda and here we have delta phi then we can calculate the output frequency as 2 times the velocity divided by the wavelength and we can introduce a new number I call it k which is 2 over lambda and this is the multiplication factor factor between the velocity and the output frequency. If the target moves with a velocity of one meter per second, we get an output frequency of 70.2 Hertz. Okay, I have set up here the module. It is supplied with five volts. It draws here 45 milliamperes, this is 20, 225 milliwatts. You can see here a rolling plot on the oscilloscope. So you can see when I put my hand over it, this is then the target. And when I'm moving with a constant vo uh, velocity, we get a constant frequency. 
the output signal. Of course we have here not an ideal uh, setup, so we have many reflections. It also gives an output signal when I come from the side. The two antenna, these are patch antennas, four pieces. Here we have one antenna here and here is the other one. So we get the sensitivity in this direction, but not in this, at least not that much. The output signal has an offset of 16 millivolts. and an amplitude amplitude of about um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 millivolts in the best case. So your target has to be very close. So let's try to do a simple verification of the formula we derived from the physics. I have here uh, centimeters. Here we have 10, 20, 30, 40 centimeters. So now I try to move my hand with the velocity so we get one sine wave cycle every division, so every second. not very easy. Now let's try to move the target exactly 10 times lambda, which should be about 14 centimeters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I measure here 15, about 15 centimeters. Perhaps I did some tilting error, which is uh, it's very sensitive to it. But more or less the number is correct. Thank you very much for watching.